Welcome to this Herbe Group podcast, produced by our Medical Insight Studio. In today's episode, our clinical application manager, Dr. Nicholas Frommel, is talking with Professor Felix Hart, medical director of the renowned Thorax Clinic in Heidelberg, Germany. A new perspective randomized multicenter study in Lancet Respiratory Medicine evaluates the diagnostic value and safety of the novel transbronchial metastinal cryobiopsy. Professor Hart adds context to the findings of his study and the potential incorporation of cryobiopsy in the diagnostic algorithm. First of all, thanks for having us, Professor Hart. And I'd like to start right away. Um, can you maybe explain what the situation was and which data has been available when you decided to conduct the current study? Yeah, thanks a lot for giving us the opportunity to debate the, public, the recent publication. And first of all, I'm one of the authors. So we did that together here in Heidelberg and the team in China. Uh, we published uh, at the beginning of the year the, for the first time that we can use the cryoprobes to have access to the medicine lymph nodes and having sh shown that it have quite a good yield. And now the big question was when we randomized the patient either to ebus TBNA, what we call the gold standard, or we randomized them to the cryo biopsy of the lymph nodes, is there any difference? And uh, we were able to show that uh, due to the amount of tissue which we are able to take out from the mediastinum, the overall yield in the cryo group was higher, significantly higher than in the classical ebus TBNA group. So that for us, the message is cryobiopsy of lymph nodes is possible, it's safe, and it's effective. Mm -hmm. Now that the new publication is out in Lancet on top to the data you acquired before, so which, would, which are the main takeaways from the current publication in your eyes? Yeah, the, you always say the first publication might be biased because we used in the same patient, the same lymph node both technologies. Yeah? And then there's always scientifically a debate, is that really pure science? Now it was randomized, so um, the, the patient didn't know if he was randomized in the arm A or in arm B. The, during the procedure, we unblinded and then the decision was made. So this is from a science level, a higher evidence level. And now based on that randomization, this is also one of the reasons why Lancet Respiratory takes it, um, we were able to show even in a pure randomized control way, cryobiopsy is better. It's not in comparison the same lymph node from left side from right side. It's really independent by patients and lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. So in this publication, as far as I can recall, you found that the diagnostic yield in the subgroups for the when you compare the control group with EBUS TBNA mm -hmm. only and the combined group with EBUS TBNA and cryobiopsy in the same patient that the diagnostic yield was significantly higher in benign lesions. There was a uh, similarly high diagnostic yield in lymphoma, but with the ability to subtype the lymphoma in more cases uh, with cryobiopsy, and that there was a similarly high diagnostic yield for typical lung cancer. Um, so can we look a bit deeper into the patients with the non-small cell lung cancer, maybe? What has have been your findings? Yeah, first of all, I think for the broad community, there are two major limitations. The procedure was done by really experienced bronchoscopists. And second, the reading of the tissue was done by experienced lung pathologists. So therefore, you mentioned lymphoma. Normally, when you read the guidelines for ebus TBNA and lymphoma, it's clearly recommended don't do it because you are the, the standard pathologist, when I can call it. Um, I don't want to blame on anybody, but when you have to do everything from the top to the down, uh, the classical pathologist is not able to diagnose lymphoma based on cells. A dedicated lung pathologist who is trained reading that is maybe able to do that, but they are not able to do the subtyping. 
And therefore, the recommendation is coming. Ebus TBNA not needed because we need the subtyping. But now in the trial, we were able to show in the lymphoma patients, which have been not as many as we initially suspected because the enroll, the inclusion was a little bit enlarged lymph node so that we have, the expectant was we have a higher rate of lymphoma patients. Um, in all the lymphomas, we were able to do the subtyping. So we don't need another procedure. When you establish in this ebus TBNA in lymphoma, you still need a mediastinoscopy to come up with the subtyping, which is super important for the therapy decision. So this is not needed anymore with cryobiopsy. And that is also reflecting to the lung cancer patient you ask for. We have really dedicated, specialized lung pathologists for that. So we have a, a high yield. The yield is for, for sure above the mean in the broad community. So I would expect when we would doing a similar trial with non-experienced lung pathologists, the gap would be even higher between the two technologies. But what we also stated in the paper, lung cancer, it's for sure the question, is it lung cancer or, or what it is? But nowadays we have to go for the next generation sequencing. So we have to go for the molecular staging. And that was possible in all cryo cases because we have enough tissue out. Uh, therefore, it's always a, bit, a little bit the question, what is the indication for bronchoscopy? It's staging. For staging, I don't believe that cryo will be replacing ebus TBNA for the staging because staging, we also go for smaller nodes. But when you go for diagnosing the disease, and it might be also lung cancer, and it's oh, the only area which you can reach easily by the scope. I would go nowadays by the cryobiopsy because you are sure you can establish a diagnosis and when you know it's a non-small cell lung cancer, you can do the molecular staining and you can do also the immunostaining, what you need, what you need nowadays to come up with a clear treatment algorithm. When we look at the procedure, how many samples with a cryoprobe have you been taken? Yeah. <laughs> We, we have taken one cryobiopsy and uh, therefore we have chosen a little bit of longer freezing time to get enough material out. Uh, the big question in the future will be, should I go for smaller, for shorter freezing times and going for more samples? But we set the hurdle now. We published, we have a high yield with one single biopsy using the 1.1 uh, the millimeter probe. So whoever is cheating us that we need to have to show me that evidence-based. Absolutely, absolutely. All comes down to science here. Um, if we compare to other sampling modalities, so cryobiopsy versus mediastinoscopy, cryobiopsy versus TBNA, where would it fit in in your eyes? Yeah, you see what happens to mediastinoscopy. When, when I started uh, bronchoscopy and have been involved in the development of the ebus tbna scope, at that time, mediastinoscopy was a gold standard. Then EBUS TBNA came and have taken away all lung cancer questions from the surgeons. So when you read the guidelines, diagnosing, staging lung cancer, EBUS TBNA is the preferred method. Now we still have that lymphoma, benign disease, psychoid, and whatever group left, which are, I think, worldwide mostly diagnosed by metastinoscopy. Now we have cryo. And from that piece, of the cake, the surgeon still owning, we will take away another big portion. There will be a remaining part, uh, even with cryobiopsy, we are not able to diagnose 100% of the patients, so there will be always a little bit left over for the surgeons, but the need for metastinoscopy, and that also means an invasive procedure, maybe hospitalization, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at the anesthesiological protocol and the airway management, how was that done in the patient series? That is uh, the, one of the reasons why I like to work with my good friends from China, because everybody has his local setting. So we did it, Richard, the uh, colleagues down there did it in um, a conscious sedation, and we haven't seen any difference. So therefore, we can really state, use your local setting, what is your preferred method to do. You can do cryobiopsy of the mediastinum, whatever is your technique. 
Mm -hmm. And looking at the uh, comparison across the different centers, what would be the um, complications that a new adopter, a first performer of the technique would have to anticipate? So as, as mentioned, we haven't seen any severe complications. Uh, for sure, when you uh, when you do it for the first time, you have to make your incision you may, with the electro knife. You might be a little bit nervous, but nothing happens to that. And when you take out the cryo specimen, sometimes you see a couple of blood drops. But you be knowing that from EBUS DNA as well. So normally you have maybe a little bit mild bleeding, um, and then we haven't seen any severe complication. Having the history of EBUS in mind, initially we also, everybody thought it's a completely safe procedure, but we have seen everything um, in the last 20 years, but it's really rare. So I'm relatively sure having now cryobiopsy of the lymph nodes as the next standard procedure, we will see in the near future, maybe an infection, maybe a pneumo where we put, have to put a train in or something, but that will be super rare. And we are handish people. When we're doing something, something can happen. Absolutely. Um, when you look at your experience also with other proceduralists performing this intervention, do you see a dependence of this safety profile on the expertise of the bronchoscopist? Yeah, for sure. So you see, when you when you do an EBUS procedure, especially for the for the larger lymph nodes you maybe see vascularization inside the lymph nodes. And then when you are trained to handle that, you, you are able to put your probe next to the vessel, not directly in the vessel. So for sure, experience will drive the complication rate. Mm -hmm. Looking at the patient population that is eligible to mediastinal cryobiopsy, what would be in your eyes the contraindications? Where would you not go for EBUS guided cryo? Yeah, for sure. When we have often, no, not often, we have patients who have for cardiac reason the need for anticoagulation and it's, it's hard to stop anticoagulation for whatever reason. I don't talk about aspirin, that doesn't harm, but when you go for a new anticoagulation, we doing ebus TBNA when the patient is still on that. I would not do a cryobiopsy in a patient who is still on an oral anticoagulant. So that would, for me, the patient, I would say, okay, let's try it with an ebus TBNA. But if you fail, then you have to go for mediastinoscopy and then you have to stop that anticoagulation. So it, it's patient-based, but that is at the moment really the only patient population where I would say that it's at the moment a clear no-go and all other are debatable. So. so like abscesses, like mediastinal cysts or something, this would be... Yeah, a cyst, uh, I think the, with the ebus TBNA and the, and, the, and the CAT scan modalities, you should be able to identify a cyst up front. Yeah? And the cyst, we shouldn't puncture, so we shouldn't cryobiopsy them. Yeah? Um, but... If it happens, it happens, and then you have to put the patient on antibiotics afterwards directly to, to avoid an infection of the cyst. But, but cystic lesions, I would not do as is recommended not to do it with the ebus DNA scope. Mm -hmm. Last but not least question, if you would dare a view into the future, how are the results going to impact your future practice and how do you expect the future practice to, to develop? across the globe with that result? Yeah, for sure. Now we have two, two bigger publications. The third publication is more or less in preparation. Um, and um, in all the data we have seen until now, we were able to show it's safe and we have a high diagnostic yield. And then it's more or less a local setting. When you are very good in diagnosis, lymphoma, for example, it's with your pathologist and your setting and the EBUS TBNA needle, the need for move to cryo is maybe not as high. But I would say the majority worldwide don't have as good data in lymphoma, in sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, and whatever disease you might be suffering on. And in those, I would clearly foresee that in, a, in the next coming months and years, Cryobiopsy of the lymph nodes will become the next standard. Okay, that's a bright future, I would say, for the patients and, and for also for the <laughs> and for the technology. 
So thank you very much, Professor Herd, for taking the time today and uh, we look forward for further results from your center. Thanks. Professor Hart underlines the added diagnostic value and safety of the novel transbronchial metastinal cryobiopsy in accordance with the latest data. In his view, specialized pathologists' expertise represents the potential bottleneck in the diagnostic pathway, which cryobiopsy can help to bridge irrespective of the patient's disease state. He expects further adoption of the technique that continues to evolve with upcoming data from Heidelberg and other centers from across the globe. Thank you, Professor Hart, for sharing your experience, and Nicholas for being here today. Stay tuned for our upcoming Medical Insights podcast, a podcast by the Herbe Group. To get further information and view our terms and conditions, please visit our website at www.herbe-med.com. <laughs>